Barak Yahuwah, Barak Yahuwah, Barak Yahuwah. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom to the whole Ba'ith, which is to say the whole house of Yasha all. All 12 tribes worldwide, wherever your feet are touching the soil, on this most Kadush Yun. Peace and blessings, Shalom and Barak Ut to you and your entire house. Shabbat Shalom to the elder brother, Yahuda. Shabbat Shalom to the younger brother, Afraim. Shabbat Shalom to the former stranger, the former foreigner, who is now no longer estranged from the everlasting covenant, but having now been being engrafted into the olive tree, who is Yahusha HaMashiach, who is Yashar'al, whereby having received the Ruach of Sonship, the Ruach of Adoption, the Ruach Hakadush, and whereby now being privy to the very same everlasting covenant and promise and inheritance that was given to Yashar'al and to Yashar'al alone. Shabbat Shalom to you. Where, why? Wherever your feet are touching the soil, to the elder brother, the elder Ach Yehuda, to the younger brother, the younger Ach Aphraim, to the former Gentile, the former nation, the former stranger, the former foreigner, who is no longer a stranger or a foreigner or a nation or a Gentile, but having been engrafted into the olive tree, you are now a fellow citizen, a fellow Yashalim, and now privy to the same, the very same everlasting covenant and promise and inheritance that was given to Yashar'al and to Yashar'al alone. Shabbat Shalom to you. Shabbat Shalom to you, to those of you who are on YouTube who will listen to this later on. We are grateful and we <laughs> welcome you once again to Yahuwah's Remnant Shabbat Gathering. We do not take this lightly. We take this responsibility very seriously. Uh, we take it as a serious responsibility and we are humble and we are grateful that the master has sent you our way so once again shalom to you shabbat shalom to you uh those of you on youtube who are going to view this later on welcome to yahuwah's remnant shabbat gathering i am Dawood ban yahuwah and this is my aisha which is to say wife asha yah shabbat shalom Shabbat Shalom to you, Barak Yahuwah. And once again, uh, for those of you who are on YouTube who would like to join us live, you can find our contact information. There's an email, there's an email address located in the channel description of which you can use to contact us if you desire to join us live. Shabbat Shalom to you. Barak Yahuwah, Barak Yahuwah, Barak Yahuwah. Once again, we're here gathered for another Shabbat gather on this most Kadush Yom. I love the Shabbat day. I, I, I absolutely love the Shabbat day. It is a special day, and uh, it just it just feels special to me, little one. It feels special. It's different. It's different. There's a there's a different feel. There's a different vibe, so to speak, on the Shabbat day, and I absolutely love it. Um, and uh, this is a day. This this, this is a day in which it. it if, if you are looking for an hour of visitation, if you're looking for a day of visitation, listen, there's no coincidence that the Hamashiach went throughout the land healing on this day. Barak mm -hmm. this is when he's the closest. This is when he comes to visit. Barak this is when he comes to rest with us, to celebrate with us, and abide with us. If you're looking for an hour of visitation, this is that day. This is that day, Barak Yahuwah. Not only that, but it is, it is a day that joins us into everlasting covenant with our master. Barak Yahuwah, Barak Yahuwah, Barak Yahuwah. Here we are again, walking the ancient path. Walking this ancient path in which the master has laid before us. It is the narrow path. It is the narrow way. It is the hard-pressed path that leads to everlasting life. It is the servant's path. path. It is the servant's way it is the humble servant's way indeed we are his servants yashar all is his servant and so does 
this is the pathway of reconciliation and we as servants walk in this path are servants of reconciliation we are the lights to the gentiles we are the lights to the nations he has entrusted us with his righteous torah he has entrusted us to be salt and light he has called us to be living torahs he has called us to be living menorahs to be living lights to shine light in the midst of the darkness so that through us through his servants of reconciliation he will reconcile the rest of mankind back into an everlasting covenant with him. Rock Yahuwah, leading up to this point, we were preparing for Shabu'u. And in preparation for Shabu'u, the master uh, was, was preparing us via the washing of the word and cleansing us and preparing us to receive his breath, to receive his root. En route to that, the master, he gave us the revelation that, in fact, there are two manner of people. Either you're living or you're dead. That's it. There is no in-between. There is no gray area. There's black and there's white. Yes, there is. There's light and there's darkness. There's the living and there's the dead. Unless you receive breath, you're still dead. A body without breath, indeed, is dead. It is indeed dead. And he has revealed to us that he is not the Elohim of the dead, but of the living. Indeed, the Hamashiach has told us in Romans, the 8th chapter, around about the 29th, around about the... Round about the ninth verse. That unless we have the Ruach, the breath, the, the, the breath of Yahuwah, the breath of Hamashiach, then we do not belong to him. I'm sorry, little one. Okay. You know how I get excited. Barak Yahuwah. Then we do not belong to him. We are indeed still dead because of the judgment that he pronounced over mankind. And that Adam and Kuh, in the day that you partake of this fruit, is the day that you, shall, you will surely die. And thus they disobeyed the voice of the master and death entered into the world. And so all mankind is dead. Yes, all mankind is living dead. Until that judgment is satisfied and you are resurrected from the dead via the breath, the wind, the life, the rock of Yahuwah. Unless you receive him, you are indeed dead. You are still dead. And so all mankind must be resurrected from the dead. And indeed, Shabu is, uh, is the day in which the renewing of the covenant is received. It is the day in which the breath of Yahuwah is poured out upon our flesh. And so we, 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 we were leading up to that day with great expectation, with great anticipation, uh, uh, with, with great expectation, with a great urgency to receive his breath in this season with the understanding that he is getting ready to remove his breath. He is getting ready to turn off the living water. And so we approach that time, that day, with a great urgency and with a great expectation and anticipation to receive his breath so that we would be counted amongst the living, so that we indeed would bear the seal, the mark, so that indeed we would be sealed on board the Ark of the Covenant, kept safe from the proverbial floodwaters that are soon to come upon this earth, kept safe from the hour of trial which is soon to come upon this earth. Being found worthy, Barak Yahuwah. To be found worthy is to be a wave offering, to be presented as a wave offering. First fruit, to be presented to the Father by our high priest, our Kahan Gadal, Yahusha, Hamashiach, being weighed before him as a first fruit wave offering, well pleasing and well acceptable unto him, giving a song that no one else can sing. But the Master now has thrown us a curveball. Yes, he has. He has thrown us a curveball in that now that you've received this breath, if you've received this breath, indeed, that now you are indeed are his sons and his daughters. You now indeed are his servants. You now indeed are on this servant's path, this ancient path, this path of reconciliation, this path that leads us back to the master. You are now on this path, and now there is an expectation of you. There is a requirement of you. If you indeed have received this breath, there is an expectation and a requirement that you are going to now be a servant of reconciliation. And the master has spoken these words that if you're slumbering, you're going to die. They that slumber, they that sleep will die. You cannot slumber. You now, having received this breath, must walk, you must work, you must be found well doing when he comes. You must be doing, you must be doing the work of a servant of reconciliation when he comes. If you are found slobbering, 
if you're found sleeping, as those who are lazy do. Those who are lazy, they love to slumber. They love to sleep. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. They love to sleep and slumber. If you're found sleeping and slumbering when you come amongst the dead, because indeed, to sleep is a Hebrew idiom, means to be, and it means to be dead. It means to die. It means to be buried. It means to sleep. It means to sleep the sleep of death. If you're found slumbering when he comes as a lazy and wicked servant, you're going to be counted amongst the dead. You're going to be counted amongst those who are asleep. And he's going to determine you to be a wicked and lazy servant. And he's going to command his messengers to bind your hand and foot. Cast this wicked, lazy servant into the outer darkness. You have not been given his breath. You have not been given his rule to sit pat and to do nothing. Now you are expected, you are required to be a servant of reconciliation. You are required to be an overcomer if indeed you are Yashar'al, if indeed you are Yahakub. So you are expected servant, servant of Yahuwah al you to serve him, to do the works, to do the works of the Ruach. You are expected to be a servant of reconciliation and to be found well-doing, to be found well-doing. In order to receive the words, well done, well done, my good and trustworthy servant. A servant does not complain with harsh treatment. A servant does not complain. A servant cannot take a day off. A servant simply cannot take a day off. Indeed, a servant must work six days. Six days, 6,000 years has he given his service to work. And he, and he alone, was going to give us a day off on the 7,000th year, on the seventh day. But we must work unto that time. We must work until the proverbial doors of the ark are closed, irrespective of affliction, irrespective of trouble, of pressure, of trial, of persecution. You must work without excuse. As our master worked through affliction, through pain, through trouble, through pressure, through persecution, pouring out all his life, putting others before himself, serving even unto death upon the stake. We must walk as he walked, and we must serve. We must serve until the proverbial doors of the ark are closed. And you are not his servant as he has spoken. You are not his servant unless you've received breath, unless you've, unless you've received wind, unless you have received ruach. And if you have, there is an expectation and a requirement on your head, Yahaku, <laughs> Yasha'al, that you are his servant and that you do work and that you serve, that you be a record, that you be a servant of reconciliation, that you work while it is still day, because night is soon to come when no man can work. There are lives at stake, there are souls at stake. And the master has placed this awesome responsibility upon the house of Yahakub, of whom he has written his righteous Torah upon our hearts to be messengers, to be servants of reconciliation, so as to show compassion on some and to drag some out of the fire, screaming and kicking, dragging them on board the Ark of the Covenant, bringing them out of darkness into his marvelous light. This expectation is upon your head. Whether you are man or woman, if you have his breath, you are expected to serve and to build his house and to contribute to the building of the house with, with whatever tool, with, other, with whatever talent, with whatever gift that he has given you to, to, to come in the building of this house, to put your hands to work, to put your hands to the plow, to build this house with living stones with living stones to build this house, to call his people out of darkness into his marvelous light before the proverbial floodwaters come upon this earth. Barak Yahuwah. Barak Yahuwah. And so here we are again on this ancient path. And if you're taking notes, <clears throat> this is Searching for the Ancient Path, part 53. Searching for the Ancient Path, part 53. Walk in thy calling. Walk in thy calling. If you've received breath, then you're called to do something. You're called to contribute something 
to the building of this house. If you indeed have received his breath, his ruach, his wind, and you are now counted amongst the living, you now are expected to contribute something. Whatever that is, whatever gift and calling, whatever spiritual gift that he's given you, you are now expected to contribute. Again, if you sleep and you slumber, you're going to be counted as a wicked and lazy servant, and you're going to be cast into the outer darkness. Darkness indeed means death. If you want to behave like you're dead, you're going to be cast with the dead into outer darkness, where it is said there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. If you have received breath, you are now expected to walk in that calling. To walk in that calling. He didn't breathe his breath upon you for you. He breathed his breath upon you so that he would be esteemed amongst men and so that men would be drawn out of darkness into his marvelous light through you, through his living tabernacle, through his dwelling place, through his living menorah, through his Torah made flesh, that mankind would be drawn out of darkness into his marvelous light through you. You ask for his breath, now you got it. You have his breath, now you must walk in your calling. You must now walk in your calling. And the master wants to deal with that some more today. <clears throat> and he's going to deal with this, I believe, until he, he's, he is going to deal with this until he tells me to stop. Until, until he tells me to stop. But he's going to deal with this in a different way today with respect to walking in that calling. With respect to walking in that calling. Indeed, leading up to Shabuot, many were expecting things. Many were expecting a fireworks show uh many indeed were putting the master into a box i mean we were we were expecting an acts two experience many of us was and if you be honest you, you'll tell the truth you were expecting an acts two experience where there was a mighty rushing wind that came in and filled them with a roar of hagadush but the master has shown us that it has never happened that way again it didn't have it neither had it happened before then and neither has it happened afterwards. But indeed, the master has shown us that, have, that have, there have been many mighty men of Yahuwah, many mighty women of Yahuwah, who did not receive a mighty rushing wind, <clears throat> yet were filled with the roar of HaKadosh, were filled with his breath. They were filled with his breath. But the master has sent me by today to tell you that even though you have his breath, his breath, his wind, his ruach in you must be activated. It must be activated. If you don't act upon that breath, that wind, that ruach by belief, it's not. he is not going to do anything for you. He wants to do stuff through you. You've got to act by belief. You've got to now walk out your calling by belief. If you don't believe, nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. If he has breathed his breath into you, and by breathing his breath into you, now he says, go raise the dead. Go raise them. If you don't go out and say, get up in the name of Yahusha, rise. In the name of Yahusha, Hamashiach can live. You've got to activate it. You must activate your belief. You must act out your calling. You must walk out your calling by belief. You can't just sit idly. You can't just slumber. If you've received this breath, walk. Walk in it. Cast out devils. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Walk in it if he's called you to it. If he's called you to it, don't go and say, well, 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 the shepherd said that I'm supposed to raise the dead. I didn't tell you that. If it's your calling, walk in it. If it's your calling, then walk in it. Whatever your calling is, Barak Yahuwah, whatever your calling is, you must activate it. The way to call down Shamayim is through belief. The way to, to, to use the keys of Shamayim is through belief. Walking this ancient path is through belief. Being a servant of reconciliation 
is through belief. Walking in thy calling is through belief. You can't walk in your calling without having belief. I don't care how much of his breath he's breathed into you. If you don't activate it through belief, if you don't activate the breath, the ruach, the wind, the power, the power that is in you, then you are, you, you, you are indeed spitting on a very reason that he came to die for you. That is, to deliver you from the reign of darkness into his marvelous light and to use you as a servant of reconciliation via the power of his Ruach, not by power, not by might, but by his Ruach, thus says Yahuwah. He sent me by to tell you that you've got to activate this thing. If he's breathed the breath of life into you, you've got to activate it via belief. You've got to just do it. You've, just, you've got to just operate in it. You've got to believe. If he is in you, believe. Believe. And walk according to your calling. Walk it out according to belief. And he will meet you. He will do the thing in which you believe. If he is with you, he will do the thing in which you believe. Walk out your calling, but you must activate it via belief. Line by line, precept upon precept. Walk in that calling. But you can't walk in your calling without belief. You can't walk in your calling without your belief. I'm, not, I'm under no illusion that everybody's received this breath. I'm under no illusion. Some of you have not received this breath. The master Barak Yahuwah, his name be esteemed, has given me the ability to see dead folk. I see dead people. I don't physically see you, but I see dead people. He's given me the ability to see dead people. Some of you, you, you walk around like you're living, but you're dead. You're dead. You're a mimicker. You're a pretender. You're religious. Yes, religion is a mimicking spirit. You're mimicking like you have his Ruach, but you're dead. You don't have him. He's shown me you. But indeed, he's allowing, he, he's allowing the, the wheat to grow up with the tares. And he ain't said nothing to you because you're pretending. You're prideful. You're pretending. And you won't come out and say it. That you're a mimicker. That you're a pretender. That I don't truly have his Ruach, but he sees you. And so I'm not under the illusion that all of you have his breath, all of you have his ruach, because you don't. Some of you do, though. Some of you do. And for those of you that do, you've got to now walk in your calling. It is required of you, but you cannot walk in his calling without belief. Line by line, precept by precept, hear a little, dare a little, walk out thy calling, walk in thy calling, activate it through belief. Give us a precept, little one. We have Mark 11, 12 to 24. Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. Verses? 12 to 24. Verses 12 to 24. Mark chapter 11. Verses 12. The 24. I'm crazy enough, little one, to believe everything the master spoken over me. Barak I'm crazy enough to believe it. Barak and I'm crazy enough to walk in it. Barak Yahuwah. Barak Yahuwah. I'm just crazy enough to believe it. Barak Yahuwah. Master said he's going to heal my eyes so that the nations believe. Barak and so that his name is esteemed among them. I'm just crazy enough to believe it. Barak Yahuwah. So be it. Barak Yahuwah. Sham Yahusha. Barak Yahuwah. But Sham Yahusha. It shall happen. Not one word shall fall void to the ground. I'm crazy enough to believe everything, beloved son, that he has spoken over me. Barak Yahuwah. And I'm going to walk in my calling. What about you? Barak Yahuwah. Come on. Step by step. Barak Yahuwah. Mark chapter 11. What verse, little one? 12 to 24. Verses 12 to 24. Beginning at verse 12. Come on, read, little one. And on the next day... When they had come out from Baith Anya, he was hungry, and seeing at a distance a fig tree having leaves, he went to see whether he would find any fruit on it. And when he came to it, he found none but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. And Yahushua responding said to it, Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his taught ones heard it, and they came to Yerushalayim, Yahushua entering into the Kadush place. 
began to drive out those who bought and sold in the Kadush place and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those selling doves. And he did not allow anyone to carry a vessel through the Kadush place. And he was teaching, saying to them, Has it not been written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. And the scribes and the chief priests heard it, and they were seeking how to destroy him, for they feared him, because all the crowd was astonished at his teachings. And when evening came, he went out of the city, and in the morning passing by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Then Kapha, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you have cursed has withered. And Yahusha answering said to them, Have belief in Elohim. Have what? Have belief in Elohim. Have what? Have belief in Elohim. Come on. For truly I say to you, Yes. Whoever says to this mountain, uh -huh. Be removed and be thrown into the sea. Yes. And does not doubt in and, his heart. And does not what? And does not doubt Walk in his heart. Walk in your calling by belief. Come on, read. But believes what he says. Yes. Shall be done. Oh, it might be done. He shall have whatever he says. Because of this, I say to you, whatever you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Look, one, I want you to back up because I, I was trying to get you to stop. I was trying to get you to stop and work with me, little one. I was trying to get you to work with me so we can we can massage this thing and work with it. Okay. Little one kept going though. She kept going. Barak Yahuwah. Barak Yahuwah. Barak Yahuwah. Barak Yahuwah. It says that 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 if they that if they believe that it might happen. Mm -hmm. it, it could happen. happen. There's a possibility that there's a mistake. There's a mistake, son. Yep. There's a mistake. That, that, that there's, a, there's a percentage of a chance yep. that if you believe mm -hmm. that this mountain is going to be removed to the sea. Yep. Is that what it says? Yep. Truly. Truly. Mm -hmm. It shall happen. It shall happen if you believe and do not doubt you can't walk this walk. You cannot walk in your calling without belief. And if indeed you have his breath, you've got to activate it. You've got to activate it. And the way to activate, oh, Barak Yahuwah, the way to act, I, I was getting ready to get ahead of myself, little one, but I can't. That's one of the precepts. Okay. Barak Yahuwah, Barak Yahuwah. I'll come back to that, Yahuwah willing. You must, it, it, without belief, you cannot activate who is in you. Do you understand? Without belief, you cannot activate the power that is within you. You cannot activate him who is in you. Without belief, you cannot walk in your calling. You cannot walk in your calling. If he has breathed in you, hear him. If the master has breathed in you, Yahuwah himself is in you. And if Yahuwah himself is in you, wherever your feet touch the soil, the rain of Elohim has come. I recall the words of the Hamashiach when they accused him of casting out devils by Baalzebub. And he said to them, if I cast out demons or devils by Baalzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out by? They shall be your accusers. And if Hashatan cast out Hashatan, he says, a kingdom divided cannot stand. If Hashatan cast out Hashatan, how shall this kingdom stand? But if I cast out devils by the ruach of Elohim, then what? Then the reign of Elohim has come upon you. If his breath is in you, wherever you go, the reign of Elohim has come. You must walk. You must walk by belief to activate he and the power that is in you. Barak Yahuwah. Come on, give us another precept, little one. Line by line, precept upon precept. Walk in your calling, but you cannot walk in your calling without having belief. Habakkuk 2, 1 through 4. Habakkuk. Habakkuk. Habakka. Habakka. Commonly called what? Habakkuk. Habakkuk. That's, that's what the King James says, isn't it? <laughs> Habakkuk. Come on, get with me, little one. <laughs> Habakkuk, right? It, 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 son, is it Habakkuk? Is what they call it. Habakkuk. <laughs> Barak Yahuwah. Kabakuk. 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 What chapter, little one? Second chapter, verse 1 through 4. Verses 1 through 4. Habakkuk. Kabakuk. Correctly. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. 
she's actually going to read it from the KJV because I like I, I, I like the way that reads better so that we get a better understanding of what it's saying here. Habakkuk, Habakkuk, chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, beginning at verse 1. Come on, read, little one. I will stand upon my watch. Yes. And set me upon the tower. Uh -huh. And I will watch to see what he will say unto me. Yeah. And what I shall answer mm -hmm. when I am reproved. Yes. And the master answered me mm -hmm. and said, Write the vision mm -hmm. and make it plain upon tables mm -hmm. that he may run that readeth it. Mm -hmm. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, uh -huh. but at the end it shall speak mm -hmm. and not lie. Mm -hmm. Though it tarry, mm -hmm. wait for it, mm -hmm. because it will surely come. Mm -hmm. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, mm -hmm. but the just shall live by faith. Barak Yahuwah. Barak Yahuwah. Now, Speaking this in correct terms, a correct language. This is the righteous. The righteous shall live by belief. The righteous shall live by belief. How are you made righteous? <laughs> when the rule of righteousness enters you. Because he is who? He is Yahuwah Zadachanu. Yahuwah is our righteousness. We are made righteous when his righteous ruach enters us. Now, if you are righteous, it says here, you shall live by belief. And if you are righteous, if his breath has entered you, then you there is an expectation that in walking in your calling, you shall walk by belief. You must walk by It is impossible, hear him, to walk in your calling without belief. You've got to activate it. You've got to activate it. Quit waiting. Quit waiting on your ceiling to open up. For your, your ceiling is split and a, and a bright light to come down shining through it. Quit waiting. Quit waiting for, for, for Gabriel, the messenger of Yahuwah, to come down and speak to you personally. Quit waiting. It is the unbelievers who seek signs. They seek signs. If the master has breathed his breath in you, activate it. Walk in it. By belief. Walk in it. Do what he's called you to do. If you do not, he's going to hold you accountable. He's going to call you a wicked and lazy servant and cast you into the outer darkness. But the only way to walk in this is by belief. The righteous shall walk by belief. Line by line, precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little. Come on, little one, give us another precept. We have Matthew 14, 25 to 31. Matthew chapter 14. 25 to 31. Verses 25 to 31. My talk, Yahoo, Matthew chapter 14, verses 25 to 31. My talk, Yahoo, chapter 14. Mm -hmm. Barak Yahoo. Verses 25 to 31. Verses 25 through 31. For those of you who use the index, that's the very first so called gospel. That's the very first one. Very first one. I ain't gonna call out no names. Those of you still use the index. Rock Yahuwah. Matthew chapter twenty chapter fourteen. Mm -hmm. Verses twenty five to thirty one. Beginning at beginning at chapter twenty beginning at verse twenty five. Read for us, little one. And in the fourth watch of the night, yes. Yahushua went to them, yes. walking on the sea. Uh -huh. And when the taught ones saw him walking on the sea, uh -huh. they were troubled, saying, mm -hmm. it is a phantom. Do you not understand that Yahushua, who came as Yahuku, who came as Yashua'ah, who came as firstborn, was showing us how to walk in our calling? Do, <laughs> do you understand? <laughs> we are his only son. His only begotten son, his Yahid. He, Yahuwah in flesh, was showing us how to walk in our calling by belief. By belief. Do you not know, son, that you can do that by belief? Do you believe it? Yeah. Barak Yahuwah. Barak Yahuwah. Barak Yahuwah. Come on, read, little one. And from fear they cried. Uh -huh. But immediately Yahushua spoke to them saying, uh -huh. Take courage, yes. it is I. Uh -huh. Do not be afraid. Yes. And Kapha answered him and said, uh -huh. Master, if it is you, mm -hmm. command me to come to you on the water. Command me to come out. You command me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to believe your command. I'm going to believe the Torah. 
How can you say you believe the Torah if you don't obey the Torah? You're lying. And the truth ain't in you. He gave him a command. He gave him a Torah. Come on out here. Come on out here, Kaffa, and walk with me. Because I'm merely showing you how to walk in your calling. Come on, read, Luan. And he said, come. And when Kaffa had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Yahushua. Uh -huh. But when he saw that the wind was strong, mm. he was afraid. Mm. And beginning to sink, he cried out. He started to doubt because fear is the absence of belief. Yes, it is. Fear is the absence of belief. They can't coexist. No, they can't. No, they can't. Fear is from darkness. Fear is from the adversary. Belief is from on high. Yes, it is. Fear is the absence of belief. As long as he believed. <laughs> Was he walking, little one? Yes, sir. He was walking, right? Mm -hmm. He was walking in his calling. By belief. By belief. What do you think it means to be son of Elohim? What do you think? Oh, you don't understand, do you? What do you think it means to be son of Elohim? <laughs> mm. If you are son of Elohim, and there are no limitations in him. How can there be limitations in us? We've got to activate our calling through belief. Through belief. And as long as he believed, he walked in his calling. He was able to walk in his calling. The minute he doubted, the minute he feared, indeed, fear is the absence of belief. He started to sink. He started to sink. Come on, finish reading, little one. Saying, Master, save me. And immediately Yahushua stretched out his hand and took hold of him and said to him, Oh, you of little belief, why did you doubt? Mm. See, you got to believe. Was he not walking, little one? Yes, sir. Was he not walking, son? Yes. He was walking in his calling by belief. And the minute he doubted, he was unsuccessful. You can't walk in your calling without believing. You cannot walk in your calling without believing. The master wants to do, hear him, hear him, please. He wants to do uncommon signs and wonders through his called out ones in this season. Because we are living in unprecedented times. And, and, and living in unprecedented times is going to take uncommon signs and wonders to call his remnant out of darkness into his marvelous light. But we can't walk in uncommon signs and wonders without having belief. We cannot walk in our calling without having belief. And you've got to be able to receive instructions. One of the instructions given was to make sure your mics are muted. That was one of the instructions given. You've got to be able to receive instructions. Yes, it was. One of the instructions that was given was to ensure that your mics are muted at all times while the word of Yahoo is going forth. It was spoken. It was spoken. So it starts with listening and being able to receive instructions. Line by line, precept upon precept, walk in that calling. But you cannot walk in your calling without having belief. Without having belief. Line by line, precept upon precept, hear a little, dare a little, walk in that calling. But you must activate your calling through belief. Barak Yahuwah. Come on, read for us, little one. We have Mark 16, 17 to 20. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Verses 17 through 20. I recall when his taught ones were trying to cast out that deaf and dumb demon. And they couldn't cast it out. And the father of the young boy came to the Mashiach and begged him to cast out the devil. And the master spoke of him about belief, did he not? He spoke with him about belief. He said, do you believe? Yes, master. But then he said, help my unbelief. Mm -hmm. Help my unbelief. And he cast out the devil with a word. With a word. He didn't, he didn't argue with him, son. He didn't negotiate with him. He commanded him to leave by a word because he was fully confident in who he was. He was fully confident in the power within him. Without doubt. Thank you, master. Fully confident. And the power within him without doubting. He cast the devil in, and his taught ones came and said, Master, why were, we, why were we not able to cast out this devil? He said first because he unbelief. Is that not what he said? Because of your unbelief. He said, but then, but this one only comes out by prayer and by fasting. 
But he began by saying, because of your unbelief, you could not cast him out. You cannot walk in your calling, beloved ones. You cannot walk in your callings without belief. You can't. You can't. Quit waiting. If he's breathed his breath into you and you know he's breathed his breath into you, then operate. Operate in it. Activate it. Walk in it by belief. Walk in it by belief and do not doubt. Do not doubt. Walk in it by belief. Barak Yahuwah. Line by line, precept upon precept. Here a little. There a little. Give us another precept, little one. Mark 16, 17 to 20. Beginning at verse 17, read for us. And these signs shall accompany the ones who believe. For the ones who do not believe. The ones who believe. The ones who believe a little. No, sir. The ones who believe. The one who believe half the time. The ones who believe. And these signs shall, accomp shall accompany those who believe. And these signs shall. Does it say shall? Yes. Maybe. Shall. A possibility. Shall. There's a percentage of a chance. Shall. These signs shall accompany those who believe. Read. In my name they shall cast out demons. Uh -huh. They shall speak with renewed tongues. Yes. They shall take up snakes. And if they drink any deadly drink, it shall by no means hurt them. Mm -hmm. They shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall get well. Yes. Then indeed, after the master had spoken to uh -huh. them. Uh-huh. Come on, I love this part. Read. He was received up into the heaven. Uh -huh. And sat down at the right hand of Elohim. Come on, get to the other good part. Come and on. And they went out and proclaimed it everywhere. Uh-huh. While the master worked with them. While the master worked with them. Why did he work with them, little one? Read. And confirmed the word through the accompanying Oh, if you a Christian that is listening, the word is not the Berit Kadashah. The word is the Torah. We are lights. We are living Torahs. We are to teach the Torah. We are to be Torah made flesh. And if we proclaim the Torah, the word, and if we are Torah made flesh, the text declares that he is going to confirm the word. Through what? Accompanying, Accompanying signs. signs and wonders. But he begins this text by saying, you must believe. You must believe. If you believe, if you believe in the power that is within you, and you are operating in righteousness, you are operating in Torah, you are being a living Torah, a living light, a living menorah amongst the nations, he will confirm the word. He will confirm the word. If you believe, if you believe, you cannot walk in your calling without belief. And if you're not walking in your calling, you're not pleasing unto the master. You're a wicked and lazy servant. And if you don't believe, you're not pleasing to the master. Isn't that the next precept, little one? Mm -hmm. Barak Yahuwah. If you're not walking in your calling, you're a wicked and lazy servant. He ain't going to be cast out into the outer darkness, not being a light in the midst of the Gentiles, drawing them out of darkness into his marvelous light. But you can't walk in your calling without belief. You can't, you, you can't please him if you're not walking in your calling. And if you had, haven't received breath, and you, can't, and, and, and you can't please him if you don't believe. Boy, isn't that a, isn't that a, a conundrum, as they say? <laughs> yes. You can't walk in your calling without belief. You can't walk in your calling without belief, and you can't you can't please him without belief, and you can't please him without walking in your calling. Ain't that a conundrum? Isn't that a conundrum? He has called his servant Yahku to be a light in the midst of the nations, to be salt and light, to be living Torahs, to teach the nations his righteous Torah, to call them out of darkness into his marvelous light, to invite them back into the bond of covenant with him. And in this season, and in this season, perhaps save them from the hour of trial that is soon to come upon the earth. This is serious. This is serious. As Master and Methuselah preached for 120 years the message of repentance to save mankind from the, from the flood, flood waters that, was, that were soon to come upon the earth. He has given us this great and awesome responsibility now to walk in our callings, to be living Torahs, living lights, 
to draw men out of darkness into his marvelous light and to invite them on board the, the, the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of the Covenant before the proverbial ark doors are closed. But you cannot walk in your calling unless you've received breath. And you cannot walk in your calling if you do not believe. And you cannot please him if you have not received breath because you're dead. You're dead. And you cannot please him unless you believe. Unless you believe. Give us another precept, little one. Hebrews 11, uh, verse 6. Hebrews 11. Abarim, Hebrews 11, verse 6. Hebrews 11, verse 6. Hebrews 11, verse 6. This is the ancient path, beloved ones. <clears throat> this is the ancient path. Walking out your calling by belief. Walk it because you can't walk the ancient path without walking in your calling. And walking in your calling has always been to be a light to everybody else who's in darkness. That has always been our calling. And this is the ancient path. This is the pathway to reconciliation. This is the way of righteousness. This is the way of righteousness. Walking in righteousness. Doing righteousness. And walking in our calling. Being living Torahs. Being living lights. Being living menorahs. And operating in power. Signs and wonders. If he's called you to it by belief. By belief. Not for our sake, but for the unbeliever's sake. So that the master will be esteemed amongst the nations. And so that they will believe. So that they will believe and cast down their idols. And tear down their standing stones. And, and turn away from their wickedness and their uncleanness. And come back to the light of his righteous Torah. Into the bond of covenant with him. And as that applies in this season. To perhaps be kept from the hour of trial. From the proverbial floodwaters that are soon to come upon the earth. Hebrews, Alvarez chapter 11 verse 6. Begin at verse 6. Read little one. But without belief. Yes. It is impossible to please him. Uh huh. For he who comes to Elohim. Yes. Has to believe that he is. Yes. And that he is a rewarder. Yes. Of those who earnestly seek him. You can't walk in your calling. And you cannot please him without belief. It's not enough to say that I have received the breath of the living Elohim. It's not enough to say it. You must act as though you believe it. And if the breath of the living Elohim is in you, if he is in you, then wherever you go, again, the reign of Elohim has come. But you must walk in it and activate it via belief, by belief. Now, as the master has spoken, not all of you have received his breath. There's also a story in the book of Acts called the, uh, regarding the seven sons of Sceva. Don't go out here trying to cast out demons if you have not received his breath. The story, the story goes on to say in that account that they were beaten out of their clothes. They were beaten out of their clothes. You cannot hide. The master sees your nakedness. He sees your nakedness, but more importantly for you who have not received his breath, if you haven't received his breath, you're still dead. You're dead. You're most of dead. You're not living. You're dead. You're dead. And when he removes his breath and when he removes his people, you're going to be left amongst the dead to suffer the great tribulation because you're trying to fake it until you make it. You're trying to pretend. You're trying to pretend amongst this kadu, amongst this kadu shame. Do you not know that he's given us eyes to see dead people? He's given us eyes to see dead people. And you're not going to fake it until you make it. When he comes to remove his breath and to remove his people and to save us from the hour of trial and you are left there, then all, your, your, your nakedness is going to be exposed to all to see. Everybody's going to see your nakedness. And everybody's going to know that you are a pretender, that you are faking, that you do not genuinely have the breath of the living Elohim. But if you indeed have the breath of the living Elohim, you must now walk in your calling and you must activate whatever gift and whatever calling that is given you through belief. Through belief. Line by line, precept upon precept, you do not have to receive a mighty Russian wind to receive his breath. If you've received this breath, be that living Torah. Walk in the Torah. Be a living Torah. Be a Torah made flesh. And walk in your calling. Walk in your calling. Be a servant of reconciliation. A light in the midst of the Gentiles. 
and, and, and walk in that calling and receive those words. Well done, my good and trustworthy servant. And be found well doing, overcoming all obstacles when he come so as to receive a crown of righteousness, so as to receive your reward. Barak Yahuwah, Barak Yahuwah, Barak Yahuwah. He has laid the foundation here. This was to lay the foundation uh, and to lead up to where we left off last week. We left off in 2 Kings, 2 Kings, the second chapter. We left off in 2 Kings, the second chapter. And we're going to continue reading through 2 Kings and observing the life and the walk of Al-Isha, commonly called Elisha. We're going to continue through 2 Kings until the master tells us to stop. Observing the life and the walk of Al-Isha, commonly called Elisha. Commonly called Elisha, walking in his calling. Walking in his calling. Being a living Torah. Yes, indeed. Being a living Torah, but walking in his calling as a man of Yahuwah and as a Nabi. Walking in his calling, but more than a Nabi. More than a Nabi. Being a man of Allahim. Being a man of Allahim. And being a, a priest of Allahim. Being Melchizedek. Being Melchizedek. Being a priest in the order of Melchizedek. Walking in his calling by belief. Walking in his calling by belief. Second Kings. Second Kings. Malachim. Bat. Malachim. Bat. Second Kings. Malachim. Bat. Second chapter. The second chapter. Second chapter. We're going to read again over what we read last week. We stopped last week because we had already, I believe, gone over two hours. And we stopped before we read the whole chapter. So we're going to start all over again so as to capture the intent of what the master is trying to, is trying to relate to his people. He's trying to relate to his people that although you did not receive a mighty Russian wind, it does not mean that you have not received this breath. It does not receive that you have not... This does not mean that you have not received Ruach. And if indeed you have received Ruach, you have received this breath, then now you must walk in your calling by belief. By belief. Second Kings, the second chapter, Malachim, Bach, the second chapter, beginning at verse 1. Come on, read for us, little one. And it came to be when Yahuwah was to take up Aliyahu to the heavens by a whirlwind, that Aliyahu went with Alisha from Gagal. And Aliyahu said to Alisha, Please remain here, for Yahuwah has sent me on to Baith all. And Alisha said, As Yahuwah lives, and as your being lives, I do not leave you. And they went down to Baith all. And the sons of the prophet who were at Baith all came out to Alisha and said to him, Do you know that Yahuwah is taking away your master from your head? And he said, I also know. Be silent. And Aliyahu said to him, Alisha, please remain here, for Yahuwah has sent me on to Yariku. And he says, As Yahuwah lives, and as your being lives, I do not leave you. And they came into Yariku. And the sons of the prophets who were at Yariku came to Alisha and said to him, Do you know that Yahuwah is taking away your master from over you today? And he said, I also know. Be silent. And Aliyahu said to him, Please remain here, for Yahuwah has sent me on to the Yardan. And he said, As Yahuwah lives and as your being lives, I do not leave you. And the two of them went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood facing them at a distance, while the two of them stood by the Yardin. And Aliyahu took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. And it was divided this way and that. Understand this. He didn't strike that water through unbelief. He struck that water being fully confident in, in who he was and who and in who was in him and in the power that was in him. Having full belief and full confidence that if he struck that water, it was going to divide. You can't walk in his calling without belief. He fully believed that if he struck that water, it was going to divide. Come on, read little one. So that the two of them passed over on dry ground. And it came to be when they had passed over that Aliyahu said to Elisha, Ask what I am to do for you. 
before I am taken away from you. And Elisha said, please let a double portion of your root be upon me. Please let a double portion. Whoa. A double portion of Ruach al Yahoo be upon me. Now, it is written in the book of Malachi, commonly called Malachi, that in the last days that uh, he was going to send all Yahoo. In other words, he's going to pour out Ruach all Yahoo. Not on everybody. Not on everybody. He's going to send Ruach all Yahoo in order to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children and the hearts of the children back to the fathers. In other words, to turn them back to the righteous Torah. Did not say I'm going to send all Isha. I'm going to send all Yahoo. I'm going to send all Yahoo. Yet, he's asking now for a double portion now. A double portion of Ruach all Yahoo here. A double, I want you to get the context here. A double portion of Ruach all Yahoo. All Yahoo was a mighty man of Yahoo. A mighty man of Yahoo. In fact, when you when you go to a Jewish assembly, if you go to a Jewish assembly and you celebrate what they call Passover Cedar with them, there is an empty chair there. They set up an empty chair. And if you ask them what the empty chair is for, they will tell you it is for all Yahoo. They, they, they await the return of all Yahoo. Ruach, all Yahoo to return. And so this was a mighty man of Yahoo. A mighty man of Yahoo. But yet, our Isha now is asking for a double portion of the Ruach, which is upon all Yahoo. Get the context here. Get the context. Read little one. And he said, you have made it hard to ask. Yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it is yours. It is yours. But if not, it is not. Mm -hmm. And it came to be as they continued on and spoke that see a chariot of fire with horses of fire, which separated the two of them. And Aliyahu went up by a whirlwind into the heavens. And Elisha saw it and he cried out, My father, my father, the chariot of Yasharal and his horsemen. And he saw him no more. Barak Yahuwah. Hold up right there. Yes. Now, there is no evidence of a mighty Russian wind. We spoke about this last week. No mighty Russian wind here. No mighty Russian wind. In fact, there's nothing unusual. Well, the only unusual thing that happens is that all Yahoo is taking up <coughs> here a chariot of fire. But other than that, there is nothing unusual that happens in terms of him now receiving a double portion of the Ruach that was upon all Yahoo. His mantle fell to the ground. But there's nothing unusual. So this this you you, you need to understand now. That he did here, he, and we were about to read, he did in fact receive a double portion of the Ruach that was upon Al Yahu. But he received it via belief. He received it via belief. He believed the words of Al Yahu. He believed them. And, and he, he stood there and he saw him when he was taken up. And he believed that he would receive a double portion. He believed it and he did. He simply received a double portion. Do you understand? He simply received a double portion of the Ruah that was upon all Yahoo. Now, let's watch his walk. Let's look at his walk. Because now, he is getting ready to walk in his calling. He is getting ready now to walk in his calling. Come on, read, little one. Then he took hold of his garments mm -hmm. and tore them into two pieces. Mm -hmm. And he took up the mantle of Ali Yahu yeah, come on. that had fallen from him uh -huh. and went back and stood by the bank of the Yardan. What did he do, little one? And he took the mantle of Ali Yahu, mm -hmm. what had fallen from him, uh -huh. and struck the water and said, be, be full, Understand fully here that he had full confidence and belief that if he struck this water, it was going to split apart. He had full confidence and belief that now I got a double portion of the roar in which my father, my father, all Yahoo had. And I'm going to strike this water, and as it split for all Yahoo, it's going to split for me. Because I have belief. I'm walking now in my calling. I'm going to walk in my calling, activated via my belief. Read. <clears throat> Where is Yahuwah Elohim of Aliyahu? Mm -hmm. And he struck the water. Huh. And it was divided this way and that. Don't think that this water was not, that this water split because of his unbelief. This water split because of his belief. Because of the belief that he had received a double portion. 
And now that I have received a double portion, I'm going to walk in my calling. I'm going to walk in my calling. And he struck the water and it split. And he be now begins to walk in his calling. Read little one. And Elisha passed over. And when the sons of the prophet who were from Yericho saw him, they said, The rook of Aliyahu rests on Elisha. Ah, how'd they know that? <laughs> Barak Yahuwah. Because he walked in his calling. They saw him strike the water. In which he did so by belief. And he walked in his calling. And they knew that the roar of all Yahoo rested upon him. Because he walked in his calling. Come on, read, little one. And they came to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. And they said to him, look, there are 50 strong men with your servants. Please let them go and search for your master. Least the rook of Yahuwah has taken him up and cast him upon some mountain or into some valley. And he said, Sin no one. But they pressed upon him till he was ashamed. And he said, Sin. So they sent 50 men and they searched for three days but did not find him. And they returned to him for he remained in Yaraku. And he said to them, Did I not say to you, Do not go? And the men of that city said to Elisha, Look, the sight of this city is good, as my master sees, but the waters are spoilt, and the soil barren. And he said, Bring me a new bowl, and put salt in it. And they brought it to him. And he went out to the source of the water, and threw salt in there, and said, Thus said Yahuwah, I have healed this water. No longer shall death or barrenness come from it. And the waters were healed. Barak Yahuwah, being fully confident, in his calling, not hesitating, not stumbling, being fully confident and walking in his calling. If you're not confident in your calling, if you don't have belief, you cannot activate it and you cannot walk in your calling and you cannot. It is impossible for you to please the master. Come on, read the one. To this day, according to the word of Elisha, which he spoke. And he went up from there to Baif all. And as he was going up the way, some youths came from the city and mocked him and said to him, Go up, bald head, go up, bald head. And he turned around and looked at them. He didn't say a word. He didn't say a word. He looked at them because the fire and the power of the living Allahim was in him. Indeed, the Torah was in him. I will curse those who curse you, Yahakub. Who do you think Yahakub is? He is the son of the living Allahim, being full of the Ruach HaKadosh. He is his servant. Yahusha came as Yahakub. He came as Yahakub. Yahakub is the son of the living Allahim. Turning around, looking at them, being the son of the living Allahim, not saying a word, but having the Torah written in him, written upon his heart. I will curse those who curse you. And Barak those who Barak you. Read, little one. And pronounced the curse on them mm -hmm. in the name of Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. And two female bears came out of the forest and tore to pieces 42 of the youths. Mm -hmm. And from there he went to Mount Carmel. And from there he returned to Shamarun. Barak Yahuwah. Barak Yahuwah. Yahu. Being confident. Being confident. He, listen, please, get the context. Get this. Get this. All the way until Al Yahu was taken up. Al Isha was his servant. He was his servant. Al Yahu was prophet, was Nabi of Yahuwah Al Yun. Al Isha was his servant. He was his servant. He was his assistant. But immediately upon Al Yahu being taken up and he receiving a double portion, get this. He no longer was serving. He immediately began to walk in his calling. Immediately he began to walk in his calling. Having received what he asked for. Now many of you asked for his breath leading up to Shabul. You asked for it. You wanted it. Now, like Al Isha, you must now walk by belief in whatever calling that he's called you to. Not for your sake. Not for your esteem. But for the esteem of the master. So that he may be esteemed through you. 
And so that the nations, the nations are drawn out of darkness into its marvelous light and brought into the bond of covenant with him. He immediately then began to walk in his calling. And that same requirement is required of you. There was no mighty rushing wind. No, the only thing spectacular here was all Yahoo being taken up. Other than that, there was nothing spectacular that happened when he received a double portion of Ruach all Yahoo. But he received it by belief. And immediately, as you're reading, as you're listening here, he went from servant to Navi of the living Allahim. And immediately began to walk in his calling by belief. Immediately walking in his calling by belief. Second Kings, the third chapter. Second Kings, the third chapter. We're walking along with this mighty man of Yahuwah. Walking along with him. Observing his walk. Observing him now walking in his calling. Going from servant. Going from servant of all Yahuwah. As we read in 2 Kings, the 19th chapter, when the master Yahuwah told them that he was to anoint Elisha as his replacement. He went and threw his mantle upon him and he said, Master, first, uh, let me go say goodbye to my, to my mother and my father. And he did so and he broke the, the yoke that was on the oxen and he slew them and he cooked it for his friends and his family. And he said goodbye to me. He immediately began to follow all Yahu as his servant, as his, as his assistant. But here in 2 Kings, the second chapter, he now went from servant to Nabi. He replaced all Yahoo. He immediately went from servant to, to Nabi of Yahuwah. Yes, he's still a servant, but get the context. To Nabi of Yahuwah al -Yun. And immediately he began to walk in his calling. And that same expectation is required of you. Read little one. And Yaharam, son of Akab, began to reign over Yasharal at Shamarun in the 18th year of Yahusaphat, sovereign of Yehuda, and reigned 12 years. And he did evil in the eyes of Yahuwah, but not like his father and mother, for he removed the statue of Baal, which his father had made. But he clung to the sins of Yarubam, son of Nabat, who had made Yasharal sin. He did not turn away from them. And Maisha, sovereign of Ma'ab, was a sheep breeder. And he paid the sovereign of Yasharal 100,000 lambs and the wool of 100,000 rams. And it came to be when Akab died that the sovereign of Ma'ab revolted against the sovereign of Yasharal. And sovereign Yahoram went out of Shimarun at that time and mustered all Yasharal. And he went and sent to Yahusaphat, sovereign of Yehuda, saying, the sovereign of Ma'ab has revolted against me. Do you go with me to fight against Ma'ab? And he said, I go up. I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. And he said, which way do we go up? And he said, by the way of the wilderness of Adam. And the sovereign of Yasharal went, and the sovereign of Yehuda, and the sovereign of Adam, and went round a journey of seven days. And there was no water for the army, nor for the cattle that followed them. And the sovereign of Yasharal said, What has Yahuwah called these three sovereigns to give them into the hand of Ma'ab? And Yahusaphat said, Is there no prophet of Yahuwah here? Then let us inquire of Yahuwah through him. One of the servants of the sovereign of Yasharal then answered and said, Elisha, son of Shaphat, is here, who poured water out of the hands of Aliyahu. If you are Nabi, be a Nabi, then speak, thus says Yahuwah. Speak, thus says Yahuwah. It is for the reconciliation of the nations. It is for the reconciliation of the nations to bring them back into the bond of covenant. This, 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 this anointing upon Al Isha, it was not for Al Isha. It was for the reconciliation of the people to call them out of darkness back into covenant with Yahuwah. The signs and wonders that he operated in was for the esteem of the master Yahuwah in order to reconcile his people, to call them out of their filth and out of their uncleanness back into the bond of covenant with him. Understand this. Understand this. If he has breathed his breath into you and, he, and he's given you a gift and a calling, it's not for you. It's not for your esteem. 
is for the esteem of the master, and it is to reconcile the nation. It is to reconcile his people back into the bond of covenant with him. This is the mission of our Isha, and this, this is the mission of all his people who are called by his name. Read, little one. And Yahushaphat said, The word of Yahuwah is with him, and the sovereign of Yasharal and Yahushaphat and the sovereign of Adam went down to him. And Elisha said to the sovereign of Yasharal, What have I to do with you? Go to the prophets of your father and the prophets of your mother. Listen here. He's a man of righteousness. What I got to do with you? What do I have to do with you? He is, he is walking out his calling, being a living Torah, being a man of Allahim, speaking the words of Allahim so as to esteem Allahim and to draw these wicked men back to the bond of covenant, back into righteousness, operating and walking in his calling. Read. And the sovereign of Yasharal said to him, No, for Yahuwah has called these three sovereigns to give them into the hand of Ma'ab. And Elisha said, As Yahuwah of hosts lives, before whom I stand, if it were not that I regarded the presence of Yahushaphat, sovereign of Yehuda, I would not look at you nor see you. Mm. And now bring me a harpist. And it came to be when the harpist played, that the hand of Yahuwah came upon him. And he said, Thus said Yahuwah, Make the wadi ditches, ditches. For thus said Yahuwah, You are not going to see wind nor rain, yet that wadi is to be filled with water, so that you, your cattle, and your beast shall drink. And this shall be a light matter in the eyes of Yahuwah. Mm. And he shall give Moab into your hand. And you shall strike every walled city and every choice city and shall cut down every good tree and stop up every fountain of water and ruin every good piece of land with stones. And it came to be in the morning when the grain offering was offered that sea water came by the way of Adam and the land was filled with water. And when all Moab heard that the sovereign had came up to fight against them, all who were able to bear arms and older were gathered, and they stood at the border. And they rose up early in the morning, and the sun was shining on the water. And the Ma'abites saw the water on the other side as red as blood. And they said, This is blood. The sovereigns have indeed struck swords and have killed one another. And now Ma'ab to the spoil. And they came to the camp of Yasharal, and Yasharal rose up and struck the Ma'abites, so that they fled before them. And striking, they struck the Ma'abites, and they broke down the cities. Each man threw a stone on every good piece of land and filled it. And they stopped up all the fountains of water and cut down all the good trees until only the stones of Kai Harashaf was left, and the slingers went round and struck it. And when the sovereign of Ma'ab saw that the battle was too strong for him, he took with him 700 men who drew swords to break through to the sovereign of Adam, but they could not. Then took his eldest son, who would have reigned in his place, and offered him as an ascending offering mm. upon the wall. And there was great wrath against Yasharal, and they left him and returned to the land. Mm. Mm. The wicked heathen. The wicked heathen. The man of Yahuwah said here, if it were not for Yahushaphat, before Yahuwah Elohim, before whom I stand, I would not even look at you. I would not even look at you. But make no mistake. Make no mistake. Yahuwah loves Yasharal. We're talking the northern kingdom here, which is Yasharal, which is Ephraim. Because it is written in the first, in the 11th chapter of Husha, the, ver the very first verse. When Yahshua all was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt, I called my son. So even though this was for Yahushaphat's, Yahushaphat's sake, make no mistake that it, is the, it, it, it was and is the desire of the master for his children, for his son, Yahshua all, to repent. And so these signs and wonders <coughs> that were wrought, that were worked through this man of Yahuwah, walking in his calling, was not for his sake, was not for his esteem, was not so that he could have some platform. No, he was a very meek man who lived in the wilderness. He was a very humble man. It was not for his esteem, neither did he want any esteem. This was to esteem the master. This was, show, this was to show that there is a living Allahim, that there is an Allahim of Shamayim and Aras, and his name is Yahuwah. Come back to him. Come back into the bond of covenant with him. This is why this was done. 
This is why these signs and wonders were done. This is why it is important that you walk in your calling. That you walk in your calling, not for your esteem. Not to, so that you can have a platform. Not to, so that people can talk about you. But so that they will talk about Yahuwah. So that people will worship Yahuwah. So that people will come back to him. Coming back to him in the bond of covenant. For that reason, you must walk in your calling. You must walk in your calling. You must walk in your calling by belief. So that the nations will come back into the bond of covenant with him. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll see that you are a living Torah. And that Yahuwah is with you. So that they come back to him bowing before his feet. Coming back into covenant with him. So that perhaps as it applies to this season. That perhaps they will be kept from the hour of trial. That is soon to come upon the earth. Not for our esteem. But for his. For his. He requires us to walk in our calling. So that we become servants of reconciliation. Servants of reconciliation. So that our master Yahuwah <coughs> is esteemed through us. Is esteemed through us. And so that the nations are drawn back into the bond of covenant with him. Barak Yahuwah. Give us another chapter, another precept, little one. How are we looking for time? 116. Rock Yahuwah. Give us another chapter. What is this? Uh, 2 Kings 4 or 3? 4. 2 Kings chapter 4. Malachim Bot chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4. Malachim Bot <clears throat> chapter 4. Malachim Bot chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4. Malachim Bot chapter 4. Malachim Bot chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4. Beginning at verse 1, read for us, little one. And a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets mm -hmm. cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead, mm -hmm. and you know that your servant feared Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. And the lender has come to take my two sons to be his slaves. Mm -hmm. And Elisha said to her, What should I do for you? Mm -hmm. Inform me, what do you have in the house? Mm -hmm. And she said, Your female servant has none at all mm -hmm. in the house except a pot of oil. Mm -hmm. It is also to be... Walking in your calling is also to be compassionate. As our master Yahusha was compassionate. He was often moved to compassion. It's not for you. It's, it's not for you. It's for the master's esteem. And it's for others. It is for others. We're always to put others before ourselves. And walking at our calling. And activating, activating it through belief. But operating in it. Operating in it via compassion. Operating in this calling via compassion, not for a show, not for a show, not for our own esteem, not for a platform. It cannot be bought or sold. This cannot be bought or sold. No, it cannot be bought or sold. Neither should it, neither should we try to, to try to buy it or sell it as Shama owned the magician in the second chapter in, in the book of Acts. It's not for us. It's for others. It is for others. We must walk in humility while walking out our calling. And we must walk it out via belief. And we must be compassionate in it. We must show compassion as our master Yahusha showed compassion, being often moved to compassion when walking in his calling. As we see all Isha here now, being moved to compassion while walking in his calling by belief. Read, little one. And he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not get a few. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons. Then pour it into all the vessels and set aside the filled ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her. Is that not Torah, little one? Yes, sir. Is he not operating in Torah? Yes, sir. He's operating in Torah. Well, walk, you, you can't walk in your calling outside of walking in Torah. Torah is compassion. Torah is compassion. And so this is why the master, hear him, this is why the master confirms the word. He confirms the word. He's operating in compassion, which is Torah. And the master is getting ready to confirm this because he's operating in Torah while operating in his calling, walking in his calling 
by belief. Hear him. It's not for you. It's not for you. It's for the esteem of the master. And he confirms this. If we operate in the right way, if we operate in belief while walking in our calling, and if we walk according to his righteous Torah, being a living Torah, being a Torah made flesh, being a living menorah, being a living menorah, and this is what we are witnessing here. It's not for us. It's for the master. It's for the esteem of the master. And it is always, always, always for others. Always for others. It is never about us. It is always for others. This is how you walk in your calling. This is how we must walk in our calling. But we cannot walk in our calling again without having belief. And we cannot walk in our calling without being living Taurus. Come on, read, Lord. And she poured it out. Mm -hmm. And it came to be when the vessels were filled that she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. Mm -hmm. But he said to her, There is not another vessel. Mm -hmm. And the oil ceased. So she went and informed the man of Elohim. And he said, Go sell the oil and pay your debt. And you and your sons live on the rest. And it came to be on that day that Elisha went to Shana'um, where there was a prominent woman, mm -hmm. and she took hold of him to eat some food. Mm -hmm. And it came to be as often as he passed by mm -hmm. that he turned in there to eat some food. Mm -hmm. And she said to her husband, mm -hmm. Look, I know that this is a Kadush man of Elohim uh -huh. who passes by us continually. Mm -hmm. Please let us make a small upper room on the wall mm -hmm. and let us put a bed for him there mm -hmm. and a table and a chair with a lampstand. Mm -hmm. And it shall be whenever he comes to us, let him turn in there. Uh -huh. And it came to be on a day that he came there. He turned into the upper room mm -hmm. and lay down there. Mm -hmm. And he said to Gaka Azi, his servant, mm -hmm. called the Shunammite woman. Mm -hmm. So he called her and she stood before him. Uh -huh. And he said to him, please say to her, uh -huh. look, you have gone to all this trouble for us. Uh -huh. What is there to be done for you? What is there to be done for you? Is he not a man of Elohim, little one? Yes, sir. Very is not one. Yahuwah. Compassion. Does he not show compassion to the compassionate? Does he not? Is this not a man of Elohim? And does he not show compassion to the compassionate? Does he? Do, is he not lovingly committed to the lovingly committed ones? This is Torah. This is Torah. <laughs> this is Torah. It is not about us. It is always about the master and others. And others. And walking out our calling. It is always about the master and others. Come on, read, little one. Should I speak on your behalf to the sovereign or to the commander of the army? And she answered, I am dwelling among my own people. And he said, What then is to be done for her? And Gakazai answered, Well, she has no son and her husband is old. And he said, Call her. So he called her and she stood in the doorway. <coughs> And he said, about this appointed time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, no, my master, man of Elohim, do not lie to your female servant. And the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come, of which Elisha had spoken to her. And the child grew, and it came to be on a day that he went out to his father, to the reapers. And he said to his father, my head, my head. And he said to a servant, take him to his mother. So he took him and brought him to his mother, and he sat on her knee till noon and died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of Elohim, and shut the door on him and went out. And she called to her husband and said, Please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys, so that I hurry to the man of Elohim and return. And he said, Where? Why are you going to him today? It is neither the new month nor the Sabbath. And she said, It is well. Rock Yahuwah, this man is a priest. He is a priest. He is a priest in the order of Monkey Zadok. He is a priest. Come on, read. And she saddled the donkey and said to her servant, Drive and go. Do not slow down except I speak to you. And she went and came to the man of Elohim at Mount Carmel. And it came to be when the man of Elohim saw her at a distance that he said to his servant, Gakasai, see the Shunammite woman? Please run now to meet her and say to her, Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, It is well. And she came to the man of Elohim at the hill, and she took hold of him by the feet. But, by, but Gakasai came near to push her away. But the man of Elohim said, Leave her alone. 
for her being is bitter in her, and Yahuwah has hidden it from me and has not revealed it to me. And she said, Did I ask a son of my master? Did I, did I not say, Do not deceive me? And he said to God, Kazai, Gird up your loins and take my staff in your hand and go. Mm. When you meet anyone, do not greet him. Mm -hmm. And when anyone greets you, do not answer him. Mm -hmm. And you shall lay my staff on the face of the child. Mm -hmm. And the mother of the child said, As Yahuwah lives and as your being lives, I do not leave you. And he rose and followed her. Mm -hmm. And Gaka Azi went on ahead of them mm -hmm. and laid the staff on the face of the child. Mm -hmm. But there was no voice and mm -hmm. there was no hearing. Mm -hmm. So he went back to him and reported to him, saying, The child has not awakened. Mm -hmm. And Alicia came into the house and saw the child was dead, mm -hmm. laying on his bed. Mm -hmm. And he went in and shut the door behind the two of them and prayed to Yahuwah. And he went up and lay on the child and put his mouth on his mm -hmm. and his eyes on his mm -hmm. and his hands on his mm -hmm. and stretched himself out on the child. Mm -hmm. And the flesh of the, of the child became warm. Mm -hmm. And he returned and walked back and forth in the house, then went up and stretched himself out on him. And the child sneezed seven times, mm -hmm. and the child opened his eyes. And he called Gakazai and said, Call this Shunammite. So he called her, and she came in to him. And he said, Pick up your son. Then she went in and fell at his feet, and bowed herself to the ground, and picked up her son and went out. And Alicia returned to Gagal. You can stop right there for a moment. Barak Yahuwah. Two things. Two things. This man of Elohim did not do this for a platform. He did not do this as, as some charismatic Christians do, looking for a platform, looking for uh, uh, wanting to write a book, wanting a television <coughs> show, uh, wanting to be known, wanted, wanting to be well known on Facebook or make YouTube videos. He wasn't looking for any of that. This man was moved by compassion in the same way that Yahusha was moved via compassion. It's not for us. It's not for us. Many of you, many of you don't have his breath. Many of you don't have this power, this authority, because you want it for the wrong reasons. You want it for the wrong reasons. You want a platform. You want importance. You want to be known. You must operate in Torah. You must operate in Torah. The reason that this boy lived because he was operating in Torah, in compassion, in compassion, not for his esteem, but so that the master Yahuwah would be esteemed through him. And, and because this woman had showed compassion to him, he wanted to return the compassion to her. Thus, the master Yahuwah is compassionate to those who show compassion. And so his motivation here and walking in his calling was compassion. It was compassion for no other reason but compassion and to esteem, bring esteem to the Master Yahuwah, not unto himself. To operate in compassion and to bring esteem to the Master Yahuwah. Another point of note here. It is not the touching of dead bodies in and of itself that calls us <laughs> to be unclean. It is sin. Get the understanding of what the Torah tries to teach us. It is a it, it, it is a compilation of childlike instructions given to children to teach us, teach us about deeper spiritual matters. It is sin that separates us from Yahuwah, not touching a dead body. This man was not separated from Yahuwah when he laid across this dead, this dead little boy. That didn't separate him from Yahuwah. He was still a separated man of Yahuwah after he done this. It is sin that separates us from Yahuwah, not the touching of a dead human body. It is sin that separates us from Yahuwah, not the menstrual cycle of a woman. It is sin that separates us from Yahuwah, not leprosy. Indeed, all of these conditions are a result of sin. Yes, they are. All of them are a result of sin. But this is how the master views sin. But it is sin. Make no mistake. It is sin. It is crime that separates us from the master. Doing sin, doing crime, doing unrighteousness that separates us from Yahuwah, not the touching of a dead human body or a menstrual cycle of a woman. This man was not separated from the master after doing so. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. And we're going to find this out continuing to read. Read, little one. 
And Elisha returned to Gagal. Uh -huh. And the scarcity of food was in the land. Uh -huh. And the sons of the prophet were sitting before him. Mm -hmm. And he said to his servant, mm -hmm. put on the large pot. Yes. And cook stew for the sons of the prophets. Uh -huh. And one went out to the field to gather plants. Mm -hmm. And found a wild vine and gathered wild cucumbers from mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Filling the skirt of his garment. Mm -hmm. And came and sliced them into the pot of stew. Mm -hmm. Though they did not know what they were. Mm -hmm. They then served it to the men to eat. Mm -hmm. And it came to be as they were eating the stew. Mm -hmm. That they cried out and said, O man of Elohim, there is death in the pot. Mm -hmm. And they were unable to eat it. Mm -hmm. And he said, Then bring some flour. Mm -hmm. And he put it into the pot and said, Serve it to the people to eat. Did we'll do what? Serve it to the people to eat. Wait a minute, give me some first. Nope, serve it to the people to eat. Give me some first. I'm, I'm a man of Elohim. Give me some first. Mm -hmm. What did he say? Serve it to the people to eat, and there was no evil matter in the pot. Compassion. Compassion, compassion, uh, <laughs> compassion and esteeming the master, being a living Torah, walking out your calling, walking in compassion, being a living Torah, walking in humility, walking in humility, not seeking esteem from anybody, not seeking the esteem of men, but seeking to give the master esteem and seeking to operate in compassion while walking in your calling. And seeking to draw men out of darkness into its marvelous light while being a living Torah. This is being a living Torah. Give it, give it to the people. This is being a living Torah. This is totally contradictory to some of these modern day pastors and some of these so-called modern day prophets and some of these so-called modern day evangelists and worldwide evangelists. This is totally contradictory to them who want a platform, who want to be well known, even within the house of Yahaku. Many want to be well known. They want a platform. They want esteem. They want the attention. This is not the way of the master. This is not how we walk out our calling. This is not how we walk out our calling. This is how we walk in our calling. This is how we walk in the anointing. This is how we do so. This is how we be, this is how we are to be living Torahs. To walk in compassion. To walk in our calling. To, to walk out of our call, to walk in our calling by belief. And in doing so, and in doing so, being servants of reconciliation. Now, when he, when he did this, he said, give it to the people. Give it to them. This is drawing them to the master. Being this living Torah, being this living light. This is drawing the people to the master. Uh, through him being a light. Through him being a living Torah. And operating in his calling. This, this in and of itself is drawing the people into a closer bond, into a closer covenant with the master. Inclusive of bringing that boy back from the dead. That woman showing compassion to him. Drawing her into a closer bond. Increasing her belief. Increasing her belief in the master. And giving and drawing and, 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 and drawing attention to him and to him alone. Giving him esteem. And him esteem alone. How are we looking for time, little one? 133. Barak Yahuwah, Barak Yahuwah. We're going to stop right here. Okay. We're going to stop right here. Barak Yahuwah, okay. Barak Yahuwah. This is how we walk in our calling. And the master is demanding that of you now. If you've received this, if you've received this breath, he is demanding that you now walk in your calling. Not for your esteem. Not for your importance. Not for you to have a platform. Not for you to get some YouTube channel or, 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 to, or to make some uh, uh, Facebook video un un unless the master leads you to it. If he leads you to it and you're coming from the right heart, from the right place, then give him esteem. Give him esteem and do so. And let him use you to draw, to draw the nations out of darkness into his marvelous light. But it's not for your platform. It's not for your esteem. It's not for you to have importance. It's to be a living Torah, a living light. While walking in your calling, walking in signs and wonders by belief. To draw the nations out of darkness into its marvelous light. So that, the, so that the nations will believe and be brought into the bond of covenant. And so that perhaps in this season, they will be saved from the hour of trial.
Barak Yahoo. We're going to continue this next week or perhaps next Wednesday. We're going to continue this walk. But for now, this is enough for you to chew on. This is enough for you to chew on until then. Until the next time, Master Yahoo, I thank you for this day. Thank you, Master. I thank you for the word that has been brought forth. Thank you, Master. I thank you and I pray that this word has gone forth to your remnant within the remnant to the four corners of the earth of who yes, you have breathed your breath of life into. It is my prayer that they have been edified and convicted, yes, that they have been cut, that they have been challenged, and that now they will begin, even now, to begin to walk in their calling by belief, yes, that they will understand the urgency of this season, the urgency of this time, understanding that we have, that we are running out of time, and they, they, that they must activate their calling now and walk in their calling now to draw men out of darkness into your marvelous light and perhaps invite them on board the Ark of the Covenant. It is my prayer that this word, that not one, one word that has been spoken through the mouth of your servant will fall void to the ground, yes, but that indeed it will go forth and accomplish that which you have sent it forth to do. It is my prayer that this word, that not one word, not one, one seed will fall by the wayside, that not one seed will fall on shallow ground. That not one seed will fall amongst thorns, but that this seed would fall indeed on fertile soil. That, that, that the hammer that has proceeded from the mouth of your servant, indeed, your, your word is like a hammer that shatters. That the hammer that has gone forth today has, has shattered ground, that it, it has shattered, shattered, shattered hard ground. Broken it up. Made it fallible and ready to receive the, the engrafted word, this seed that has gone forth today. Yes, Such that your word, your, your living water will come afterwards soon, soon, shortly afterwards to water that seed. Yes, so that it grows up to become a mighty tree, producing the fruit that leads to everlasting life. In the righteous name of Yahushua HaMashiach, yes, I pray. So be it. For those of you on YouTube, once again, we're grateful that you'll stop by to Celebrate this Shabbat Yun with Yahuwah's remnant. We pray once again that you've been challenged, that you've been edified, that you've been convicted, that you've been encouraged to walk in your calling, to activate your calling by belief. Until the next time, Yahuwah barak you and guard you. Yahuwah make his face shine upon you and show favor unto you. Yahuwah lift up his face upon you and give you shalom. Thus you shall put my name on the children of Yashar'al and I myself shall barack them. So be it. So be it. So be it. So be it. Shalom. Shalom.